Hi class, this is a video for, well actually this is a video for lesson 89 and I'm doing a review of what we talked about in class regarding lateral surface area. I told you I would do that and I would try to make it quick. Um, I'm sorry I wanted to post this on Thursday, it's now Friday morning, so I am trying to get this finished and up for you. Okay, so I wanted to review lateral surface area. This would be lesson 88, it's actually entitled um, surface area of a right solid, but we've already done that. The only difference in this uh, chapter was that they wanted to show you a, an easier way to calculate the lateral surface area and lateral surface area um, that's just the sides basically and it without including the ends you know so you would calculate the sides and no ends and they call that the lateral surface area so for like a canned good if you have a can of beans and you peel off the label and you calculate the square area of that label that gives you the lateral surface area of that can so let's look at um, the, the easier way they're giving us to do this. If you look at my example drawing here with the right uh, triangular solid, what we used to do for the lateral surface area is we would take each of these um, rectangles, like you know this rectangle here, and we would multiply this distance here along this length by 15, and we write that down and then we calculate 4 times 15 and then 3 times 15 um, and we get three different areas and we add them up. What they wanted to show you, and if you recall what we did in class with the folding of the paper, is if you have this type of shape and you take some scissors and you cut along this edge here, or any of the three edges actually, cut that open if, you, if it's able to be cut open, you might just saw it open, and you lay it flat, you're going to get this shape here. You're going to just simply get a rectangle. And the rectangle, the length of each side, this is going to be the length 15 right here. And then this side is going to be the sum of 3, 4, and 5. It's going to be the sum of 3, 4, and 5. And we, I showed you that in class, so that should be easy to visualize since we already did it. So instead of calculating 5 times 15 plus 4 times 15 plus 3 times 15, uh, now they're just showing you just add up 5, 4, and 3 in this situation. That's 12 and multiply it by your um, length 15. And then you have the lateral surface area. Uh, what is 15 times 12? Well, 15 times 15 is, I really don't have to calculate this. Uh, that's 2, 3. Um, that's 5 and 1, 180. Is that right? Because 15 times 15 is 225. All right, so then your square area there would be 180 whatever inches squared. All right, so that was for the right triangular solid. If they ask for the lateral surface area, that's all you have to do. If they ask for the surface area, well, then you would have to include the ends, either end, by using the um, formula for the area of a triangle. Anybody remember what that is? The formula for the area of a triangle? One half base times height. Okay. Um, now, this method of calculating lateral surface area, we've already been doing that with the um, right circular cylinder here. Um, we've been, you know, just like I explained with the, the can of beans, we've been um, calculating this edge and then multiplying that by the height. So if that edge were, I'm not going to calculate it, I'm going to give a an imaginary uh, calculation for that. Let's say it were to have come out as a nice even 100 and my height was um, whatever, 25 <laughs> to scale like usual. Okay, well then I would just, if I, if this calculated to be 100, then over here in my rectangle that would be 100. Oh yeah, that doesn't work at all. Oh, my goodness. I really got to get better at pulling numbers off my head. Let's say that's uh, 15. That calculates to 15. Hmm. Okay, let's say that that circumference of that circle is 15 and the height is 25. Well, we would just cal calculate the circumference of 15 and we would multiply it by 25 and our square area there would be 15 times 25. I'm not going to multiply that out. I'm just showing you the method. So we've already been doing this for lateral surface area for right circular cylinders right here and now they're showing you how to do this rectangle method for other right solids 
okay? Um, over here on the right-hand side, this is actually example 88.2. Um, I don't draw well, so if you want to review this in the book, just check out example 88.2. This is another example of calculating right uh, lateral surface area using the rectangle method. Um, if you see the shape here, um, you would have to calculate, um, you would want to calculate this perimeter here, right there. And if you notice if you were to cut along this edge here and flatten your shape out, again, you would have a rectangle. What would the edges be? Well, if the, let's see here, if the height is 10, this would be 10, this edge here, and this edge would be that perimeter that I just traced up there. And how would we calculate that? Well, you'd have to get, I'm going to go to a different color because I make these messy. You would have to get this length, this length, this length, and then this length using um, the formula for the um, circumference of a circle and dividing that in half. So um, just real quick, well, you know, I'm not going to go over this. This is example 88.2. Just to save you time, I want you to go to the book and I want you to review example 88.2. What I'm telling you is they are taking this, this perimeter, okay, follow the method that they use to get that perimeter, and when you lay, when you cut this um, shape down one edge, that perimeter becomes this edge, and the height becomes this edge, and to calculate that square area, you only need to cal uh, multiply, you know, this side times this side, and that's calculating lateral surface area for that type of a shape there. So that's lateral surface area using the rectangle method. That's my label for it. Um, I'll do another one of these in class uh, when we see each other on Tuesday. Have, are we seeing each other Tuesday? Yeah, if we have one more week before break. Okay, so I'm going to move on to 89. Is it 89? Yes. So 89 was about... Um, Symbols of negation, negation, negative, that's obviously from the word negative, all right? Um, they start by throwing out some, an axiom, okay, an axiom. It's called the trichotomy axiom, all right? It's a principle that any number, um, sorry, if you have any two numbers, one is either greater than the other one is equal to the other, or one is going to be less than the other. And there's no fourth option, right? That's an axiom. We just got done list learning the properties of equality and the properties of algebra. In class, I'll go over the difference between an axiom and a property. Don't concern yourself with it right now. Um, it's, it's nice to know. It's kind of like, well, what is the difference? They seem like the same thing, properties and axioms. I'll go over that on Tuesday. Right, so this lesson deals with um, properties of negation. So, so far, you know, we've done, uh, we've done, we've used these symbols here, greater than, less than, equal to, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. We've used those to um, denote whether a number is larger or smaller than another number, equal to, and so forth. We have used, we have graphed these on number lines, right? Um, if, if x is greater than 2, they've asked for the graph of that, and you would draw a number line, you would set your center there, your origin, and you would say, okay, I want to, x is everything greater than 2, 1, 2, not equal to, so it would be an open circle, and then you'd shade that in the positive direction, right? That's how we would graph those inequalities. Now they're showing you a new symbol called the negation symbol. And it's just this, not greater than, not less than, not equal to, not greater than or equal to, and not less than or equal to. It's just the inequality symbol or the equal symbol with a line drawn through it. This symbol here, I, I may have used that in class, it's pretty common, it stands for not equal to. What are they doing with these symbols? Well, they want you to look at these symbols um, these expressions, and they want you to graph these also. How would we do this? 
Well, another way to look at not not greater than, we can just think of it as the word not and then greater than, obviously. Um, that's one way to mentally depict it, picture it. So let's say we have, um, you know, x is not greater than 3. And then, and then let's say they ask you to, to graph that. Draw your number line, draw your origin there. Let's think about it. If x is not greater than 3, then it must be less than 3. X must be less than 3. Um, it could also be equal to 3. It's just not greater than 3. So if X is not greater than 3, then we this is what we do know. Then we can conclude that X is less than or equal to 3, and then we would just graph that. We already know how to graph that, right? I'll draw a few hash marks here. Here's 3. So X is less than or equal to, or equal to means we fill in our circle because it's also equal to 3. Here's my squiggly shaded line. Oh, that's bad. Actually, I'm going to do this again. I have a much better way to shade that. Um, so that would be the graph of x is not greater than 3. So that's all you have to do in this lesson. They're going to give you a inequality with a negation symbol. You're going to write the inequality stated in a positive way. That's this one here that you can conclude from that symbol of negation, and then you'll graph that. Let me do one more. I'm going to graph it more neatly, too. All right, let's see. Let's say they give you x is not less than or equal to 5. And then they ask you to graph that. Okay. Well, okay, x is not less than or equal to 5. So let's see. If it's not less than or equal to 5, it must be greater than 5. Does that, does that statement ring true if it's not less than 5? Okay, it can't be lower than 5. And it can also cannot be equal to 5. Then it must be greater than 5. All right, you'll get good at these after you do a few. So let's graph that. 4, 5, 2, 5. And I'm going to try something here. I'm going to do this in blue. And I'm going to make that thicker. Let's see if I have better luck graphing it. All right. X is greater than 5. This is 5. It's greater. So that's so much nicer. Greater than 5. And it's not equal to, so that's going to be an open circle. And that's your graph of X is not less than or equal to 5. Okay, so they will give you an inequality, um, and the, that's the inequality with the negation symbol through it. You write the inequality that you can conclude from that, and you graph that. Right, hopefully that's clear. And that's all Lesson 89 is. All right, um, signing off, guys.